When you book a Best Western hotel, <laughs> you get all the great stuff you'd expect from a big brand, plus the feel-good glow of knowing every booking supports proudly independent hotels. Like Roger Thorpe Manor in Yorkshire, run by the Metcalf family. So with 290 unique places to stay, you're not just booking, you're booking good. Best Western, booking good. Welcome back to Edinburgh for our latest episode of Box 2 in partnership with Best Western Hotels GB, supporting local, proudly independent hotels. Welcome back to Box 2 for this, another weekly roundup. And this week I'm joined by Leeds Rhinos number 6, Standoff 5 8, depending on what continent you're watching on, Blake Austin. Blake, it's a big week for me and you. We've been on a bit of a journey this year, coaching the Leeds Beckett Uni versus the Rugby League team. We've got a big final in Nottingham against Northumbria in the Bucks Championship this week. I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait. It's uh, It's been a funny comp. They're, they're a really good side, uh, the Leeds boys, and um, we're going to face Newcastle for the third time this year. We've had some some really good battles against them. Northumbria, sorry. Yeah. Um, had some really good battles and uh, really excited to, to see the boys uh, go out and I uh, go to battle on Wednesday. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, but before we get there, let's put Cass to bed. Obviously, a bit of a disappointing loss went there. Big local derby. Multitude of sins put to bed for them, having lost their first four, got the win over their uh, arch rivals. What in the synopsis came up as being one of the biggest factors as to why we didn't get the job done? I think uh, the match was everything we thought it was going to be. Obviously, um, you know, going to the jungle and Cass where they were in the season, it was, it was always going to go the way it did I think not the result sorry but the match yeah. um, second half we just didn't hold the ball simple as that we you know first half we, we were quite happy with what we achieved we were only 8-6 eight, eight, up but we thought we were sticking to the plan quite well it's a it's a slower track a bit a bit muddy and um, but second half put simply we just too many errors in our own end um, you know I had one kicking out on the fall and um, as games like that go go further along, when you're at home in front of your home crowd and you're 0-4, I think they, they gained, gained a bit of momentum and uh, in the end done just enough to hang on. So Yeah, that cast pitch, they play it really well. They're a big set and I thought physically we'd get them in that second half a little bit like we did against Wakefield. And we seem to have that formula as well. Rowan talked about playing direct at the, at the Wakefield game there. And when we do, we look really good. And I think that Richie Myler try starts with... Uh, see he's going back, se stepping off his outside foot, backing at Rook, has a bit of a ricochet off Western when it comes back to the other side of Rook. I think yourself and Cam Smith have a hand in that and then Myler's going through the middle. When we're playing direct and, and in that arrow shape, we look pretty sharp, don't we, when we get the ball in hand? Yeah, I mean, we showed that against Wakefield. If you know, if you hang on to the ball and um, complete well, you can almost fall over the line at times and ultimately in the second half, we just didn't give our chances, yeah. give ourselves a chance to do that. We you know, come up with four or five back-to-back -back errors coming out of our own end and, um, you know, you give teams that much opportunity and, um, you know, the result's gonna, not going to go your way. So, I mean, we still only lost 14-8, so yeah. as bad as we played, we, you know, we, we can take a little bit of something from that, but um, against a better team, if we turn over that much ball, it's, it could, could be in for a long day, so, and, and Catalans are that sort of side, so we're in for a big task. Yeah. Big news on the day, Cruz Lehman. Deciding that he's going to move to Pastage New if he's got an opportunity. I'm not sure what that is right now. I was a little bit disappointed. I like Cruz. He's very much of the same sort of cloth as me. I know he's been reflecting a fair bit on his own career at the minute. Was it a surprise to you? Did it come across as a surprise up there? Yeah, we, 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 we only found out the same as everyone else, obviously, in the press conference after. I think there'd been whispers, and obviously, you know, Cruz has been moved around a little bit in the last, you know, sort of six to eight months. So, um, you know, as a, as a rugby player, I've, I've moved around quite a bit myself. Um, you, you've got to do what you feel is right for you, and, and if Cruz thinks that the moving on is, is best for him, then, you know, I wish him nothing but all the best. We're always thinking about what we want from our careers, what's next, what runs in parallel. Something you've been doing that I know you're enjoying. I've really enjoyed working with you. I've got to know you more now, coaching, and probably did do it on the, yeah. on the rugby field, to yeah, be fair. Right. Uh, but just talk to me about your passion, desire, enthusiasm, appetite for coaching and, and giving back, because you've done some with our scholarship boys. My, uh, my two eldest sons are a part of that, and yeah. then obviously with Lise Beckett as well. 
tell us about your coaching appetite. I think it's something that I want to explore going down the track. But I think for me right now, it's just about it's about giving back. I think you know I had a bit of reflection this year, and um, whether it's coincidence or not, I think some of my best some of the, the, the best years and, and seasons that I've had throughout my career, I've, I've really given back to, to the game. And as I said, uh, some people would see that as a coincidence, but I think there's, there's really something deeper there. And I think when you're, when you're putting a lot back in, you, you, you get a lot back out. So um, I'm just really enjoying that. I think the, the scholarship stuff's really enjoyable. You've got 40 kids that look at you like, <laughs> like you're Andrew Johns and, and hang on every word you say. So that's really enjoyable and you can feel like you can really have an impact on them and there's some great kids involved in that. I think the Rhinos are, are well set up for, 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 for a long time and um, the uni stuff, you know, I come in wanting to, to sort of do a bit but um, this was a bit of a lesson too. They, they were a team that's in a great spot. I think they've been together for a few years now and for me it's more just turned into a, a commitment to show up week in, week out. I think I sort of started doing it in the off season and it's quite easy when you haven't got much on your schedule, but it gets a bit tougher when the when we're playing and the games are coming around. So for me, it's it's just more of a commitment to know that I'm there and uh, can lend a hand when and when and where needed. But um, really enjoyed it. They're a great bunch of lads. They're um they're exactly what you'd, you'd expect the uni team to be. They've they've got a few little rituals and things you have to go through, and um, they enjoy a bus trip to their away games and a bus trip home, and just a great bunch of lads. They're a really good team for that competition, as I said. So they don't. Don't need too much help, but yeah. um, just enjoyed sort of showing up for them week in, week out. Yeah, it's been good. I, I remember doing some weights and I was watching NRL 360. It was an old Canberra game. I think it was playing against Newcastle and you kicked a drop goal to win it in the last minute. And uh, you're watching it think it's Blake Austin then and Caesar was playing as well. Uh, and then a few hours later, up at Leeds Beckett just playing murder ball and, and kick, kick tennis and all kinds of stuff, having a crack with, with Blake. It's good fun, but it, does it take you back as well, Blake, to when you was a kid and the reasons why you picked up a ball in the first place? Being around uni students seems to bring that youth back in us, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I miss most about living over here is, um, like, my family's heavily involved with the local amateur club. Yeah. And when I was back there, I'd be heavily involved as well. I'd, I'd love getting involved. I'd have my son by my side. He'd be, he'd be with me while I'm helping this team or helping that team. And being involved with that, with um, Leeds Beckett and also with the, the Rhinos boys, it, it gives me that feel again. I, 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 you, you're pretty passionate about where you're from, and I'm, I'm pretty similar where I'm from. And one of my biggest regrets is that I don't get to raise my kids in those environments because that's what I had, and I'd love for my kids to experience everything I had as well. But I guess you, you find homes away from home and, and little experiences like this, I think, is uh, ways that I can, you know, have a bit of um, connection with, with home and just put him back into rugby league. A long term, is that a career you'd like to pursue with coaching? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's, um, I, I live and breathe rugby league. I think it's, um, there's, not a, there's not a moment that goes by that my, my brain's not, not thinking about the game. I've had a few different coaches now. I've, I've come to understand that there are different types of coaches. You've, you've got to find what, what works best for you. But um, yeah, it is something I'd like to explore. Hopefully a few years left of, of playing. Um, but um, yeah, definitely for sure. And just looking at the, um, the Lee's Beckett potential, players like Alex Wormsley, you know, Jimmy Kynost have famously come through university pathways. It is important, isn't it, that we keep tabs on some of the talent that might present itself? Yeah, I think it's a wonderful relationship, you know, I think. We've had a few sessions now with the academy and, and the Leeds boys training, training against each other, and um, it just lets the boys know that the, you know the opportunity is there if you know if you if you do show something. I think you know we've had countless chats this year about which one of them boys could we potentially um, you know give it give half a chance to, and um, some of the players like you mentioned that have come out of there. There's there's certainly some diamonds in the rough and. Um, it just gives them a bit of hope, I, I guess. Them, some, a lot of them boys are with uh, semi-pro clubs, but um, if we can keep strengthening this program and this relationship, I think you know it's gonna it's gonna really uh, benefit both parties. Um, looking forward, then Catalan Dragons, real strong side, currently unbeaten. For me, when they played Wigan last week, I counted about eight first 17 players that weren't playing. That would decimate most teams, but they went out and got a win against a very good team. Steve McNamara's vocabulary is all about discipline, very disciplined side, very stoic, hard working. What challenges do you expect against Catalan this week? Um, well, typically, you know, years gone by, Catalan are a big, tough, 
strong side. Um, they've probably been the most impressive side for th this year. I think um, I think I've been waiting for them to fall fall off the off the wagon the last three or four weeks with the teams they've been putting out. But um, man, they're just finding a way against some really good teams too. I, um, Tyrone May's doing a wonderful job. Uh, Madam Kieran's come over and. I think Adam's the type of player that often can do quite well in the Super League. Right. You know, looks like a pretty honest guy, and he's come over for an opportunity, so he's doing a good job. Tom Johnson looks like he's spent the the off season in the weights room. He's a he's a big, powerful creature. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have our work cut out. And normally, when you speak about about Catalans, it's about all their big, ferocious forwards. But they've got a pretty good mix across the park, and I think Money Mao's gonna be in front of me, so <laughs> that'll be that'll be quite fun as well. So we, we've got our work cut out for us, but. Um, yeah, we're pretty confident in our abilities as well. We're going to have to match them in the middle and then um, take our chances when they come. Adam Kieran's somebody who stood out for me, playing in, in the centre of air, playing, but he's got that coverage, that ability to play yeah. in a multitude of positions. Yep. Caesar Ruse was back in, uh, I think, uh, last week. But what, what have you made of Adam Kieran in his performances so far? As I said, it's, it's a bit of a lucky dip when you try and work out which, which Aussies are going to come over and, and handle the comp and do quite well. I think yep. sometimes the stars come over and struggle and then... Other times, there's, there's blokes you hadn't really heard much of that can do a really good job, and I think I think he's someone that's probably come over, worked pretty hard, and he wants to he wants to keep progressing his career. And when you've got a guy like that, I think you know they can they can really um, shake up the competition. So, in a team full of stars, he's probably someone that steadies them a bit. And um, as you said, he covers. He can play play uh, centre wing, five eight, yeah. uh, probably a bit of lock in that too. So yeah, he's doing quite well. Um, they've got a little fullback that's electric as well. Yeah, Atomog. Yeah, he's fun to, to try and get your hands on, but uh, we're excited for it. Tough day, big week, Bucks Championship down in Nottingham on Wednesday, and then we've got Catalan Dragons here on Saturday. Big congratulations to our Leeds Rhinos wheelchair team as well, who kicked their season off last weekend, last Saturday, over at Warrington, getting a win by over 100 points, Blake. They kicked off really well now you might look and roll your eyes a little bit but they lost every single game that they played in for the first three years did the Leeds Rhinos wheelchair team and now they're reaping the fruits of that persistence uh, well done to them but get yourself down here on Saturday there's loads going on it's a 1pm kickoff on Saturday and what better way to spend it with the family than right here at Edinburgh Stadium as the Rhinos take on the table topping Catalan Dragons. Get yourself in early and save 50% on all draft pints up to 11am. Our newly introduced self-service e-bars will be located in front of the Headingley Lodge and near the Western Terrace. Head over to the Cafe Bar pre-match and meet our wheelchair rugby league heroes. Get some autographs, a photo with the wheelchair rugby league World Cup trophy and have a spin in the chairs too and learn a little bit more about the game. Around the ground we've also got some fire performers, dinosaurs and a gaming van and don't forget the South Stand Bar will remain open post-match with a player interview on the podium straight after the Hooter, whilst the gold members can make their way up to the Long Bar post-match for interviews and a chance to meet the team. Hope to see you down there. In the meantime, have a fantastic week. Big thanks to Blake Austin for joining us in Box 2. Have a good one. See you soon. God bless.